My name is Benjamin Maxson, and today we're going to discuss a interesting case of a Taylor body fracture, which required dual approaches, both medial and lateral osteotomies, to address the fracture. Today's case is a 34-year-old male who sustained a six-foot fall off of a ladder landing directly onto his right foot, and he had pain and was unable to ambulate on that leg. He was initially seen by the on-call orthopedic surgeon and x-rays were obtained. Initially, the patient was placed in a spanning delta frame external fixator from the tibia to the calcaneus. This was an isolated injury. The patient, young, 34-year-old, healthy, no past medical or surgical history, and no pertinent social history. These are his initial plain film imaging. We can see on the talus, on the dome, some evidence of a fracture. Mortis view, again, shows the same fracture of the Taylor dome. The lateral view is a bit more impressive. We see not only the fracture of the Taylor dome, but we see comminuted fracture fragments which have extruded posteriorly out of the tibio Taylor joint and out of the posterior facet articulation between the talus and the calcaneus. These are CT scans. Here's the axial CT scan showing the comminution and displacement of the comminuted fragments posteriorly of the Taylor body. Here we have the sagittal imaging, which again demonstrate not only comminution of the Taylor body, but also subluxation of the posterior facet of the talus calcaneus articulation. You can see significant involvement of the articular surface of the tibio Taylor joint. And here in the coronal images, we again see an intact neck of the talus with comminution from the mid Taylor body posterior, and again showing both medial and lateral displaced fragments. Our diagnosis is a common displaced Taylor body fracture with subluxation of the subtalar joint. This is a complex injury with multiple components, and unlike most Taylor fractures, this one will require osteotomy. When looking at this patient's Taylor body fracture, there are a number of things that we need to take into consideration to decide how to address the fracture. The patient has both medial and lateral combination of the Taylor body with displaced articular fragments as well as larger osteochondral fragments and there's posterior subluxation of portions of those fragments out of the tibio Taylor joint. Most commonly we would use a medial malleolar osteotomy to gain access to the medial portion of the body of the talus. That would only give us access to the medial portions of the fracture and in this particular case that is insufficient to address the entire fracture. When planning for the medial and lateral osteotomies what we will plan for is a fibuloc nail for fixation of the fibular osteotomy with syndesmotic screw fixation as we will be taking down the anterior ligamentous structures of the fibula. On the medial side of the ankle the medial malleolar osteotomy will be repaired with anti-glide plate fixation from the mini fragment set, as well as headless compression screws. The Taylor body itself will require both headless compression screw fixation, as well as bioresorbable pin fixation, as all of our implants need to be recessed below the articular surface. We will also use suture anchor fixation for repair of our ligamentous structures which we take down for access to the lateral Taylor body. Here we have the first portion of the procedure which is planning for the fibuloc nail later in the case. We use the guide wire to establish the trajectory for the fibuloc nail and we actually pre-drill for it and ensure that the fibuloc nail sits in an appropriate position and then we can proceed with opening the lateral and medial aspects of the ankle to perform our osteotomies to gain access to the accommodated Taylor body fracture. Here we see the fibular osteotomy performed, and this is after already preparing the fibula for the nail. And we're also, in this image, 
showing the osteotomy of the medial malleolus. K wires were placed to plan the trajectory for the chevron type osteotomy of the medial malleolus, which is then completed with a osteotome and hinged distally on the deltoid ligament to gain access to the medial aspect of the Taylor body. Here we can see the osteotomy completed with the medial malleolar osteotomized fragment taken distally for exposure. Here we have progression of fixation with reduction of the different osteochondral as well as isolated chondral fragments. Clamp fixation as well as provisional K-wire fixation is used to reduce and provide stabilization for the Taylor body as we look towards definitive fixation. As we progress with fixation, we use trimmet pins for fixation of the isolated chondral fragments with bony association too small for screw fixation and subsequently place headless compression screws for fixation of the larger bony fragments. As we progress, we're seeing additional screws being placed and the overall shape of the talus being recreated. After all of the bony fixation was complete with repair of our medial and lateral osteotomies, attention was turned to repair of the soft tissues. If you will remember, we took down the AITFL in order to perform the osteotomy of the fibula, and this was repaired with fiber tack suture anchors for direct tendon to bone repair of those anterior ligamentous structures. Postoperatively, we obtained a CT scan to assess our reduction and fixation of the Taylor body fracture. Here in the axial imaging, we can see appropriate reduction of the Taylor body. In our coronal imaging here, we see again the articular surface recreated with appropriate fixation of the fracture fragments of the Taylor body with the posteriorly extruded fragments reduced and fixated. And here in our sagittal imaging, we again see appropriate recreation of the dome of the articular surface, appropriate alignment of the subtalar joint, and again, reduction of the previously extruded fracture fragments posteriorly. These images are approximately four months out from surgery. On the lateral view, we see that the Taylor body has consolidated nicely. And at this point, the patient is full weight bearing, minimal limp, some tightness of the Achilles, and overall doing very well with minimal discomfort.